Let God be God. This is a call to intimacy with God. As a disciple, we are first of all called to an intimate relationship with God. It is that place that we are able to hear Him and fully trust and surrender everything to Him. You know, it's something like a, a child dancing with the father. She gently places her foot on his feet and together, you know, it's like a rhythm and a dance that's being led by the Father. She gazes at Him, mesmerised by His love. And in this place, she's fully trusting Him. And even if she should stumble, He picks her up again and leads her one more time. It is intimacy with the Father, being led by Him. It is His desire to lead us every step of the way and for us to place our hands in His hands and to be led by our God. He knows what is the best for us. There are times when the storms of life will hit us and it can be really frightening. It can be a place of fear, deep fear. Things may come in one after another. And it is in that place where we are able to make Scripture come alive because we have that communion with the Father. For it says in Isaiah 41, 13 to 14, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid, you worm Jacob. Little Israel, do not fear, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Don't we sometimes feel like a worm? We feel so little compared to the problems, the humongous problems that we face. But yet, the Lord says, I am your God. He is our Father. And in verse 15, it says, I will make you into a trashing sledge, new and sharp with many teeth. You will trash the mountains and crush them and reduce the hills to chaff. You know, in this verse, he reminds us that not only is He intimately close to us, but in the place of waiting, in the place of trust, He's actually building inside of us strength to fight the battles, strength to overcome. And out of that, we are able to set others free. This closeness draws us to that place of hunger where we desire more and more of His presence. We want to know Him more in His Word. You know, that place of intimacy is actually a place where we are being filled by Him. And therefore, ministry is an outflow. Ministry will flow out of that place of intimacy. In Zephaniah 3.17, it says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who says, He will take great delight in you, in His love. He will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Sometimes in my quiet times in, in worship, I feel like I'm truly dancing with Father God. And I know that this is this place that He wants us to come intimately in this relationship with Him. So as His disciples, let us all come to that place where we will truly dance with our Father. I used to be a beggar down on callous knees Till I got an invitation into the courts of a king I'm moving on, I'm moving on, I'm moving on, keep moving I'm moving on, I'm moving on, I'm moving on You gave me my freedom
As a disciple of Jesus Christ, we have now been given a new identity in Christ. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 says we are chosen, we are adopted to sonship as his sons and daughters. We have a God-given identity that changes our very DNA. In truly following Jesus, we develop a discipleship DNA. And this is not a superficial change, but it is deeply rooted in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We no longer live for ourselves. This new purpose is built by our seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. This new purpose is also for us to know Christ and to make Him known, to love Him and to love one another. The Bible urges us to run, but not just to run, the Bible gives us a specific way in which we are to run. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, 
since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of weaknesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Life is not a short race. It is the race of life. Sometimes we get discouraged, we stumble, we fall, and we struggle. However, the beauty of the Word of God is that we are called in this new identity to be grafted into the family of God. The Bible says this is the body of Christ. We do not run alone. This togetherness is a very powerful truth. It helps us to stay on track. It encourages us on our journey as disciples. We care for one another. We love one another. We run together. We are a community of believers that are better together. And when we do that, John chapter 13, verse 35 says, By this everyone, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We have a new identity, a new purpose and destiny. We are running together as disciples, as a community. Would you follow after Jesus? Would you lay your life to be aligned to Christ in the days ahead? Let us run the race together with Jesus as the person we look towards in this journey.
fight If you're in the fight of your life We're gonna make it hand in hand I will be by your side It's love in the air tonight I'll help you see the light We're gonna make it Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When we make that decision to follow Jesus, we begin our new life as newborn babes. And as in the natural, we need to grow as part of the family of God, which is the church. I can remember even buying so many Lego sets for my children and I always can remember you know, the excited faces of my children when they, when they get this new set and they pour out the many pieces and they want to get at it and very quickly you will see that they are struggling and they can't find the right pieces and lo and behold, mommy and daddy would just come and said we could do it together So as, as a Christian, I have been very blessed that when I first accepted the Lord, I was truly blessed to have a group of more mature Christians who came alongside me, who then, you know, week after week taught me how to read the Bible, how to pray. And eventually, they even taught me how to go out and share my faith. And I really thank God that those times where these older Christians came to disciple me, it has helped me to build a strong foundation so that I can be a disciple of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, The Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to dividing the soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Being able to chew on the Word of God will allow us to take root in the promises of God. When we do that, the Word of God becomes an anchor and a security for our faith in the Lord. I am sure that all of you would agree with me that the expectation for all living things is for them to continue growing. So what happens when these living things stop growing? It means it's a sign that they're starting to die. So as Christians, we need to have this mindset of growth, one where we would dig deep into the Word of God so that we would allow ourselves to be able to understand more of the truth of Christ Even as I mature in, in my spiritual life, I was able to attempt and overcome more difficult challenges in life. Like a child, even as we grow up, you know, we were able to attempt, you know, more difficult Lego sets. 
And even as we grow in Christ, we will be able to bear fruits. We become blessings to the people around us. We become the disciples that Jesus wants us to be, reflecting His glory and His image. The challenge for us today is that we must desire to grow and to seek after God's things so that continually we will become more and more like Jesus so that whatever He calls us to do, we will be ready to do it as disciples of Jesus Christ. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I made I was breathing but not All my failures I try to hide It was my dream yeah. Till I made You called my name And I
Good morning, Church, and welcome to FGA online service. So glad to see you here this morning and that we can come together and worship God together. Be reminded that today is a communion Sunday, so appreciate if you can get ready the emblem, all right, so that later we can um, partake the emblem together. So today, before I pass the time to the worship team, I would like to read to you uh, Psalms 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are His and we are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good and His love endures forever and His faithfulness continues through all generation. Father, we just want to um, commit this morning unto your hand that Lord, you will um, be with us. The Lord, I pray the Lord, you fill each room uh, with your presence right now. God, this morning, we want to come before you uh, with a thankful heart, uh, with, with a heart that filled with gladness and that we want to enter your courts with thanksgiving and praise for you are worthy of our worship and of our praises. Lord, we just want to pray that God, that Lord, you open our hearts today, open our ears today and eyes that, that, that we will encounter you, that we will hear from you. Father, we just want to commit this whole service unto your hand. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And now I would like to pass the time to the worship team to lead us in a time of worship. Good morning, church. This morning, we just want to welcome you to join us in a time of worship. Let's just stand. Let's just worship Him. Let's just praise His name. Amen and amen. His glory. His glory for. Let praise be the weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be the weapon that conquers all anxiety.
our praise be your welcome let our song be a sign we are here for you we are here for you let your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your light, we are here for you. We are here for you. Oh, we sing to you. Our hearts are open. Nothing you receive in you are our one desire. To you alone our holy.
So God, this morning, we just want to worship you, oh God. We want to welcome your Holy Spirit. We want to welcome your Holy Spirit, oh God. Even as we draw near to you, oh God, won't you come? Won't you come, oh God? This morning, this one of our hearts cry and one of our prayer is that God, you won't pass us by, oh God. You won't pass us by. Even as we draw near to you, God, please don't pass us by.
Even as we sing this chorus again, just encourage you to just lift your hands, surrendering yourself to God, and cry out to go- to God. Cry out to God that you want more of Him, more from Him. Let's just draw near to Him. Let's just draw near to Him. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We worship you, God. Let's just lift up our hands and sing. to enter into a time of covenant right now. So let's get ready uh, the emblem that we have prepared earlier. Reading to you this morning from Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3 to 6. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turn our backs on him and look the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. We have beaten, he has beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet, the Lord laid on Him the sins of us all. This morning, we just want to uh, meditate on this word, this passage that I've just uh, read to you. All right, if, if, if you have your emblem with you, I want to encourage you to hold it in your hand even as we meditate on the word, as we meditate on remembering um, what Christ has done for us on the cross, acknowledging all that He has done for us. He was despised and rejected by all men because of us. He was beaten, crushed because of us. And He was punished because of us and He was being crucified on the cross because of His great love for us so that we can reconcile back with God. Father, we just want to thank You even right now for all that You have done for us on the cross, all the things that You have went through for us on our behalf because so great is your love for us. 
Even this morning, we want to remember all that you have done for us. We want to acknowledge all that you have done for us. We want to come before you with a heart we feel with gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for dying on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread together. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's partake the cups together. We want to take this time to pray for you and to pray with you. If this morning you have any needs, whether you, you need a healing touch from God, whether you need a breakthrough, a restoration um, in relationship, or whether you need God to come through for you, to provide for you, or even you want a fresh touch from God this morning, I just want to encourage you, wherever you are right now, know that God is right beside you. He is right there ever ready to minister to you, to assure you. Wherever you are right now, I just want to encourage you. Perhaps you want to raise your hand, want to close your eyes. And as you, as we pray in tongues for a while, then let, let God's presence just minister to you and, and, and let Him know the needs that you have, the concerns that you have. Sharaba karabara bayandara bakaraba shanda. Shede de 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 bikianda rabara bara bayanda. Sharabara bara bara bakara bara bara yanda raba siki andara bara bara ba. If this morning you need a healing touch from God. Sharabara bara 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 ba. God is right there to heal every sicknesses. Sharabara bara bara bayanda raba kianda. If you have any backache or even a stiff shoulder, Sharaba, this morning I just want you to even lay your hands on your back or even on your shoulder and allow the healing power of God just flow through your body even right now. Some of you might even have a lot of worries, a lot of concerns that are going through your mind that you have sleepless night. Today God is saying, cast all your troubles to Him, for He cares for you. Shakayanda Bakianda. The Lord, you begins to feel each of them with your peace even right now. Lord, to pray that, Lord, you assure them even right now, assure them even right now that you are our God, that you are our God and we are your people and you are our shepherd and we lack nothing and that is for sure. Father, even this morning, we just want to come before you we want to come before you with thanksgiving, with praises. Not because of what you have done, but because who you are and what are you going to do. 
And by faith, even right now, we want to receive that healing. We want to receive that breakthrough. We want to receive that peace, that joy. But then we want to receive your goodness and your love into our household. Shout out for we serve a faithful God. That your mercy is new every morning. It's new every morning. Shandara Makayanda Bakayanda Shada Barabayanda Rabara Barabara Bakura Baraba She did it, did it, did it, did Shara Barabara Baraba. Father, we just want to thank you. So thank you for, for being with us, even right now. Shandara Bakayanda Bayanda 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 Shara Bakayanda Bayanda 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 Father, I just want to call me every hand that has been raised. And today, this morning, by faith, we want to receive all the promises that you have for us in your word. That you are our shepherd, that we are lack of nothing. That you will provide, that you will heal, that you will give that assurance, that you will give that breakthrough. And we receive that this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We would like to continue to pray our congregational prayer. All right, this morning we want to continue to uphold um, the people who have affected, uh, who have been affected by this COVID-19. All right, so um, reading to you from Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 14 to 15. You shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy, whether he is one of your brothers or one of your sojourners who are in your land within your towns. So if you were to, you can see the prayer is being flashed on the screen. All right, let's pray together, stand in the gap for our nation and for the people who are affected by this pandemic together, okay? So let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that your eyes are ever upon those who fear and love you. We praise you for the power of the blood of Jesus that is greater than COVID-19. Forgive our sins and heal our land from this pandemic. By your mercy and grace, we pray for everyone who needs to report to work on site daily, particularly the foreign workers, as we see the high numbers of workplace clusters daily. We have, have mercy upon them and protect them. And for those infected with COVID-19, please send your healing touch. We continue to pray for the safety of frontliners in the essential services sectors. We ask that your, you grant our government wisdom to give firm, effective guidelines and that the public will follow the SOPs diligently. As we raise our prayer to you, we know you are more than able to deliver our nation from COVID-19. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to continue to continue our worship and in giving our tithes and offering. If you can see on the screen, right, there's two ways you can give your tithes and offering. Uh, you can either give uh, through a bank in through the bank account or by check, right? The details is on the screen. And if you would like to give through Touch and Go e-wallet, you can scan the QR code provided on the screen with your Touch and Go app. I just want to read this verse to you from Hebrew chapter 13, verse 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And this morning, even as we give our tithes and give our offering, it is an act of worship and this morning as we give we want to honour God for all that He has provided for us for all uh, the things that He has looked out for us alright and let, let's pray for the tithes and offering dear Heavenly Father we just want to thank you thank you for the opportunity that we can uh, give back what you have given to us 
And you know, we just want to thank you for always looking after us, always look out for us. Thank you for always providing for us. Thank you for always satisfying our every desire and needs. And this morning, we want to honor you, Lord. We want to worship you with this uh, tithes and offering. And Lord, just multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So before this morning, before I pass the time to our speaker, all right, I would like to um, take some time, take some time to welcome any one of you. Uh, if to this today uh, is your first time joining our service, welcome to our service. We hope that you have been blessed so far. Uh, but stay tuned, all right? We believe that God has a word for every one of us this morning. And also, I want to speak to those of you who have been with us for a while, but uh, you didn't seem to be able to, to find a small group, a small, small family or a life group um, to belong to. Not a small group is where um, you'll find a place uh, of belonging. All right, in this big family, all right, it's a small group. It's a place where we grow. It's a place where we encourage and be encouraged. A place where um, we do life together. All right, if 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 you if this is you, all right, um, if this is you, you're new today, and you would like uh, to look for a life group, I would I want to encourage you or invite you to scan the QR code that is provided on the screen or you click on the link uh, that is uh, provided in the chat, all right? And, uh, that, and it will lead you to a, a place where you can fi uh, uh, fill up a form, all right? A very quick, easy uh, form, all right? And then someone will keep in touch with you very soon, all right? So with that, let's move into a time uh, of the word all right, today, this morning, we have um, Pastor Dr. Ui Ching Ek to share the word with us. I believe God had put uh, something very dear in his heart to share with us this morning. Um, so, Pastor Dr. Ui Ching Ek is the founder and international director of ministries for Asia Pacific, a fellowship of 500 preaching and equipping evangelists in 15 countries of Asia Pacific and beyond. His heart is for evangelism and reaching the laws and has been actively involved in being an impact even in this pandemic season. So let us uh, welcome, uh, I just want to pass the time to uh, Pastor Dr. Ui Ching Yik. Good morning everyone. It is my joy and privilege to minister God's word to you and I'm excited about the theme that your church leadership has taken up that is to do with being a church with kingdom DNA. And uh, rightly so, taking the study from the book of Matthew because so much of Matthew, uh, the five major teaching sections of Matthew has a lot to do with the notion of kingdom. And we all know both from Matthew and from the Gospels, the parables of Jesus are parables of the kingdom. I'm uh, even more excited because I've been assigned the topic of kingdom harvest. And the text is taken from the last few verses of Matthew chapter 9 and the whole of Matthew chapter 10. Uh, because of the limitations of time, I will only read uh, together with you a few verses from Matthew chapter 9, and then we will together refer to chapter 10 uh, at the appropriate juncture of the message. So would you kindly turn with me to Matthew chapter 9, and we are going to read from verses 35 right through to verse 38. Matthew chapter 9, reading from verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, 
you need to appreciate that he was going either by boat or by walking. Uh, you know, you don't have aeroplanes and uh, automobiles in the times of Jesus. So there's quite a considerable distance for Jesus to, to cover. Teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom. And I want us to underline it's not just any kind of good news, because good news can be anything. Huh? I passed my exam with flying colors, <laughs> or I got a promotion. But the gospel is the good news of the kingdom. And at the same time, the demonstration of the sign of the kingdom is that Jesus healed every disease and sickness. Now, next come a very important verse uh, for any kind of kingdom ministries to take place. When he, Jesus, saw the crowds, we are told he had compassion on them. Why? Because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So there is a challenge, there is a problem, and Jesus turned to the disciples, we are told, and said to the disciples in verse 37, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The solution is ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. All right, as I said, uh, we're going to begin the introduction on the topic of kingdom harvest. Firstly, by saying that uh, kingdom harvest involves at least four important elements. Firstly, there must be kingdom proclamation. It's not good just to, good, uh, to live a good Christian life and don't proclaim, don't give a verbal testimony to why you are doing good works, why you are living such a life. Secondly, kingdom harvest involves kingdom heart of compassion. You know, the only way we can grow outwards to embrace more people beyond, say, half an hour distance of our church or of our homes where we meet and start thinking of not just uh, Klang Valley, but go beyond to other towns uh, and cities in Malaysia and then to go beyond Malaysia uh, to other countries, is that we have to continue to grow our heart. Our hearts must grow. As our hearts grow, very often, our giving, our prayers, everything will grow as our hearts grow. Okay? The third area that's important is that we need to have kingdom kind of prayers. So it's not enough just to be a community church. We need to have a kingdom prayer for workers so that God will send workers, not just to serve within the local church where we are, important as it may be, but that God will send uh, workers into His harvest field. John 3.16, of course, tells us that God's concern is for the whole world, all the peoples of the world. Okay, For God so love the world. And so we have to slowly grow a heart of compassion and involve more of different nations of the world into our prayer life. Kingdom prayer for workers. The fourth element that's important is we need to have not just kingdom workers, but kingdom disciples in mission. Because it's only disciples are not converts that are going to make disciples. And we're going to see a multiplication of workers being released into God's harvest field. All right, uh, before we move into the four sections, I want to draw our attention to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. So the priority for every disciple of Christ is to first seek God's kingdom. Seek first His kingdom and what? His righteousness. And then there's a promise attached to it. If you focus on this, make it your number one priority. Jesus tells His disciples, all these things, you know, that the Gentiles say, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we do this? And all the basic necessities of life. Jesus says, you don't have to worry about them, okay? God will take care and supply you all the basic necessities of life. I want to stress that this is not just for people who are full-time ministry, missionaries, huh? full-time workers, pastors, but it's also for you where you are. You may be a, a housewife, you may be a retired person, you may even be a student huh? in college or in school. Wherever you are, 
if you choose to make a commitment that the kingdom of God is first in my life, I'm going to seek the kingdom of God. God will provide for all your basic needs in life. That's a promise. Okay, a quick one on the kingdom. You must have heard this expounded many times over. The kingdom of God, we are told from the gospels and from the teaching of Jesus, is already here. Jesus himself tells us in the gospel, if I, by the spirit of God, cast out demons, then the kingdom of God, he says, has come upon you. In other portions of the Bible, Jesus says, the kingdom of God is not here or there. You know? The kingdom of God, we are told, especially uh, you know, in, in, in Matthew, uh, that uh, the kingdom of God is within you. It's inside you. All right? It has come with Jesus, but the kingdom of God is with you. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. Eh? We are told that the kingdom of God is near. The preaching of Jesus is what? Repent, for the kingdom of God has come, is near. He has come with the coming of Jesus. Now, the kingdom of God has come, and yet we are told in the Lord's Prayer to pray what? Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come. Hey, it's already come. Then why pray it has come? Because the kingdom of God is still growing. It has yet to come to the fullest. A quick word, the kingdom of God is not territorial. The kingdom of God is where King Jesus rules supreme as Lord and God. And whenever any heart receives the King as a supreme God and the Lord, therein the kingdom of God is present. All right, we move now from this brief introduction to the four key expressions that will constitute a huge kingdom harvest because that's our concern for today, right? For this morning. Firstly, there must be kingdom proclamation of the good news. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. The kingdom of God has come in Jesus. The kingdom of God is good news that has what? Power. It's not just words, but it is a demonstration of power. And this power, kingdom power, is able to deliver all sinners, all kinds of people with all kinds of background from sin and bondages. And it's able to transform lives. When King Jesus rules and when people continue to submit to the rule of Jesus in their lives, what happened is the kingdom of God will increase. Luke chapter 17 verse 21, we are told the kingdom of God is within you. So the Spirit of God dwells in us. We receive God. We repent. We confess our sins. We receive Jesus. The King comes in. The Spirit comes in. And He will slowly transform and change our lives, especially in our ambitions. We now become ambitious for the glory of God. We are ambitious for the kingdom of God. We are ambitious for our family members who have yet to come to know Christ. We want them to come to salvation. We are ambitious for lots of people around our community and neighborhood that they should turn to Jesus Christ because that's the best thing to happen in life. So there has to be what? Kingdom proclamation of the good news. Now, everything about the kingdom often start with a mustard seed. Now, this idea of mustard seed is found in Matthew. It's not a chapter we're looking at, but in Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 32, Jesus tells the disciples about the parable of the mustard seed. He says, you know, kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which a man took. Huh? The mustard seed is maybe no bigger than a kwachi seed, huh? because we, we don't understand the word mustard seed in Malaysia, but everybody takes sikwa. Huh? Your kwachi seed is so small. You can hardly notice it it's somewhere on the floor. But if you take it by faith and plant it in the garden, Jesus says, what happened? That master seed will become a plant. Slowly, it takes a while. But in time, that master seed, when it's properly planted and nurtured, it will become a tree. The tree is so big uh, that the birds, birds uh, can actually perch on the branches. That is the kingdom of God. But you know, to take a master seed and to plant it in the garden is action. So it's not about hearing. I need to act on it. So, as an application, uh, God has entrusted to us uh, many resources, particularly those of us who are older, uh, we have more experience in life, we have uh, maybe put in 25, 30 years of working life. So God has entrusted to you wisdom, skills, knowledge, sometimes financial ability. Some of you got big homes or even uh, homes that can house uh, 
uh, house fellowship meeting. So what are you doing with this master seat? Okay, so just be obedient. What God prompts you to do, just go ahead. Huh? Today I'm here in a house uh, because you have two of your young men here, <laughs> uh, you know, making use of the IT skill. I, I don't know how to do it. Although I'm trained as an engineer, I don't know how to handle all this uh, IT uh, you know, equipment. But here they are. The little master seat that God has entrusted to them, uh, they are using it. And because they are using it, this message now, taken from the home, okay, can be multiplied uh, to several hundreds of homes. And many people can be blessed. So this is an occasion where I have this skill. I want to use it. I want to act on it. So that many more people can be blessed. All right? So do not shy away. Do not despise small beginnings. All great kingdom ministries and works always begin with us being obedient and stewarding the mustard seed that God has given to us. So before I move on to the next section, what are the mustard seeds that God has entrusted to you to be a good steward of? Especially in the COVID-19 season. Okay, think about it. What have I got now? What has God blessed me with that I can act on to be a blessing, not just to the church, but also to others? All right, think about that. Now, the second one is the kingdom harvest can only take place not just through proclamation of the good news, but it takes place when we grow a kingdom heart of compassion. So in the narrative that we read in Matthew the last few verses of chapter 9, we are told that the Lord Jesus was traveling from town to town, city to city, village to village. And when he saw all those crowds, uh, he was moved. One of the translations tells us he was moved with compassion. He didn't just have a thought, oh, I pity them. <laughs> it's not just a thought. <laughs> that means there was a stirring in his spirit. I really feel compassion for them. So it's important for us to grow out of our own little circle of interest and have a greater, greater circle of involvement in God's heart for peoples of the world. To begin with in Malaysia today, I think we are entering into a period where, well, you know, I'm 66, I just turned 66. I, you know, my life living in this country, I've never heard this kind of statistics where every day uh, since 2021, we are talking about at least four people are committing suicide. Hey, that hits me. In fact, I have decided the next two weeks uh, through all my several contacts from people, especially in this country, pastors, cell group leaders, I'm calling them up to talk to them one by one. Hey, can we not just pray? Uh, can we also get involved? In fact, I'm sharing with them, we need to have compassion. You know, uh, Maybe everybody should put extra 10, 20 ringgit. 15 people can collect 150 or 300 ringgit. Uh, let's find out within half an hour drive of where we stay, is there a family that is really desperate? Nothing to eat anymore. Maybe as a cell group, uh, we can go and adopt them. Uh, and then 15, 20 ringgit is not a lot. Uh, uh, for some of you, it's loose change. <laughs> you just buy two packet less or something, you know, outside. <laughs> eat some home cooked food and then it can be given to missions. But God needs workers, and you must be so moved by compassion that uh, we are not going to just drop by this home without food and uh, basic things for one month. We tell them we are here to stay. Let's do it one year at a time. And every week we'll come and pray with you, visit you. It's not just food, but we also take care of our emotional needs, that you are not alone. We are walking alongside with you to give you some stability, some certainty, some hope, so that you don't worry that after one month, what, what else? Uh? Because uh, this crisis may not be over in one month. No. It may take another 18 months before I can get some simple employment to be able to fend for myself. But for that, we need what? Brothers and sisters, a heart of compassion. Uh, we cannot just see and then, uh, how do I put it? Uh, can I use bad English or not now? Uh, those days, we like to say in MU, hey, don't make, don't know. La. You see something that you like, cha so, come on, cha so, huh? make, don't know. I didn't see, I just walk away. Unmoved, unaffected. No. When there's a crisis, when we have an ability to meet the need, uh, in the name of Jesus, we want to minister God's love. Can we say hallelujah? Amen. So kingdom involvement must take us beyond our local communities because we are talking about kingdom harvest. There must be kingdom involvement. Increasing exposures. 
and challenges will always make our hearts bigger. I know of stories of a, a missionary, a, a good friend of mine, a couple of years, my senior. I said, why, why you go to Pakistan, of all places, so difficult area? He said, because I went on a short-term mission trip and I saw the people, uh, God stir me and speak to me, you know. I want you to come back and give some years and serve these people. Do you see how they are suffering and everything? But if he is here, he don't go to Pakistan, he don't see the field, he don't see the people, he may not have the calling. So very often, uh, you see, I have no calling. Just get yourself a bit more exposed. The Lord will challenge your heart to get involved. So all of us, uh, continually, we need to be challenged. You know why? Because as human beings, uh, including me, who is in full time, we have a tendency to take the path of least resistance, the path that's easiest, the path that's most comfortable. Most of us, after a while, become creatures of comfort. Uh, just as an example, how many of you, when the times are better, you go to FGA, KL, how many of you normally sit around the same row and the same seat? You, know, you can laugh. Lah. But nobody asks you to sit there, isn't it? But you almost like autopilot that you go there without thinking. I usually sit there, so I'll be sitting there. <laughs> Creatures of what? Comfort. Huh? Those who are always sitting behind usually will sit behind. They won't sit in the first few rows. You see? So catch yourself that. And it's harder when we grow older uh, to make changes. But with the help of the Spirit of God, uh, we can continue to renew. Okay, so act on it. Whether it's poverty, uh, challenge of COVID-19, whether it's depression, whether it's suicide, and the Spirit of God will bless you to enable you. Can I also say while we're talking about Kingdom Harvest, uh, talents, whether it's money, gifts that God given to us, if we steward it well, you know, it's entrusted to us. Uh, we're not entitled, we're entrusted. But when we begin to put these talents to use for the glory of God, God in the parable of the talent will entrust us what? with more talents. So sometimes when we give, uh, the, the kingdom, the kingdom uh, dynamics is what? More will be given to you because you're putting it to use. You're not just keeping it in the cupboard. Hallelujah. The third one has to do with kingdom prayer for workers. Now, this is uh, very, very important. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, there was a great need. The harvest is plentiful. Jesus tells the disciples, come here, come here. Two of you, I want to talk to you. The harvest is plentiful. Can you see? But he says, but the workers are few. Hey, I only got 12 of you, but can we start with 12? But the answer to the huge harvest, a huge need, and COVID-19 pandemic has presented a huge need. Never before has Malaysians flown the white flag. I mean, we're not being attacked. There's no need to fly a white flag. But now, more and more every day, we are seeing uh, YouTube. Everywhere. Hey, this one is flying by flag here. That one is flying by flag. Because they cannot cope anymore. All right? So there are new windows opportunities that are open to us. Can I say this? For the next three years, it's great harvesting time. If you are able to minister with a heart of compassion, pray for people, pastor people, help them, you may find your own circles, cell groups, and church that there will be many, many family conversions, uh, whether it's English or Chinese, beyond our expectation. But I foresee that this window of opportunity will be very special and open only for three years. So when a window is open, as God's people, can I use the word? We need to seize the opportunity. We need to what? Seize the day. Because once the window is closed, there's no more. Next time when we go back, you ask people to come to church, they may have no time. So sorry, I'm very busy, I cannot come. But now, this is a period where hearts are open, ears are open, because people have great needs. Huh? So what do we do? Priority response to the problem, a huge problem of great needs. Jesus tells the disciples, you are to ask or pray or beseech in the King James Version, the Lord of the harvest. Who is in charge of the harvest? Not you, not church. It's the Lord. So he knows on earth where to post his servants, his workers. Our job is to what? Pray. As we send up prayer, the Lord will move, the Spirit will move, and workers will be sent out into the harvest field. Now, can I comment on the word send? If you look at the English Bible, it just says send. Uh, apostles are sent once from the word apostolos in Greek. But here, Matthew uses a word which is not apostoleo in Greek, it means I send, you are sent one. But Matthew says what? The Lord of the harvest will ek, ek, baleo. 
And that word is translated from Greek to, to mean what? The Lord of the harvest will throw out workers into the harvest field. The Lord of the harvest will fling. Oh, somebody will go to Nepal. <clears throat> somebody will be sent to Myanmar. Maybe somebody will be uh, sent to Tibet or India or some other places. Huh? Sometimes even those who want to serve the Lord full-time, you also want to have a comfortable life. I cannot be more than one hour driving. You know? <laughs> I want to drive to the office, this and that. That's your personal preference. But have you found out what the Lord needs? The Lord said, but I need people now to go to Myanmar. Myanmar is very troubled, you know, that kind of thing, you know. So when the Lord sends, when the Lord's uh, act baleo, throw out in response to our prayer, he will see that his field will not lack workers at any given point in time. When the Lord sends, it will be his field that is both near and far and wide. All right. The fourth one, we're going to spend time looking at it a bit more, has to do with kingdom disciples in mission. Uh, one way to tell whether a person is just a church goer or a disciple is that uh, disciples are always committed to kingdom seeking. Disciples are never satisfied. Even you got 1,000 people say, but we got the whole world. So don't just keep looking, oh, my church is big or my cell group is big. It can still be bigger because the needs are big. And we need to ask God in a big way. Disciples. So the 12 apostles were sent out what? With authority, we are told in chapter 10, verses 1 to 4, to cast out demons and to heal. These are the signs of what? Apostles. I'm sending you out. It's not just with words. When you preach, there will be signs and wonders to back up what you preach. You know? So authority was given to be exercised in the mission field. Brothers and sisters, when the Lord gives authority to us today, those of us who are workers of the kingdom, we have to exercise it. Huh? That's the purpose of the Exercise it for the glory of God. Exercise it to further the kingdom of God. I can share with you, in my over 40 years of ministry now, uh, in the field, hands-on, there has yet to be one occasion when demons were not cast out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! The name of Jesus is all-powerful. I have to be very frank with you. I pray for many sick people. Some were miraculously healed, but not all. But we thank God that God still heals through believing prayer. And because it's a pathway of healing, we want to continue to exercise the pathway, one of the pathways of healing that God has given to us. All right, Kingdom Disciples in Mission. Now, can I pause here for a while? Because we think of, before we think of grandiose projects, you know, very often, huge worldwide ministries happen eh, when we are faithful to do what God puts on our heart. So I want to tell you the story of a great missionary movement. In fact, today, uh, over the FGA Peace Haven, eh, churches are trying to, what do you call that, uh, have this 24-7 prayer. I think they say, try for one year first, or see whether we can last or not. This idea of 24 seven press, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, they try to model it after what is called the Moravian prayer movement, the Moravian missionary movement. How did it all begin? The Moravian movement was a movement of prayer that lasted for 100 years non-stop. How to do it unless the Spirit is always stirring people to pray. Hey, I'm tired already. Some of you after one month say, I'm very tired, it's enough. But it carried on for 100 years. And it was a huge missionary movement. But it began with a mustard seed. Somebody who had property, estate, a place called Hernhut. It's like a mansion with a huge estate. He said, why don't I open it for God's servant to come and pray? And that was the beginning. It all began in Hernhut, the Moravian movement. Missionary and prayer movement. For how long did it last? 100 years. Non-stop hour by hour praying for 100 years. Can I just say this? It has never been repeated in church history. Hallelujah. And so, what is important is as we see the apostles, their prayers were answered by themselves. And I begin to pray, God do something to me. Then I am the one who go. And very often it's like that. When we get the church to pray, church members will be involved in the going because they are sensitive to the voice and to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Alright, under... Other than the 12, Jesus in chapter 10 gave instructions for mission. I want to cover to you, with you the points very quickly so that we can have time afterwards to pray together. Number one, 
The initial instruction in Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 6, although his kingdom harvest was, okay, I'm just sending you for now, specific uh, in season, limited mission to the lost sheep of Israel. So don't go here, don't go there, don't even go to the Gentiles, just go to the lost sheep of Israel. What is clear in mission is, it is a journey, it is dynamic. And sometimes God starts us in the spot, can be like church planting in the area, but later God may send us out as missionaries out of Malaysia. But the idea is what? As kingdom disciples, all of us must be prepared for a journey of what? Dynamic obedience. Okay, for now, this season, COVID, maybe that's my instruction. But after that, three years from now, maybe God has something different for me. So don't try and figure out on some kind of fantastic roadmap for 20 years. It don't work like that. So God said, just follow what have you have been told for now. And more instructions will come later. Alright, so can I say three things now? Our heart, if we are going to be kingdom workers, kingdom believers, we must tell God, Lord, I'm available. Any time, any place, and anything that you call me to do. The second thing is later we find that subsequently after the Jesus' resurrection in Matthew 28, okay, it's not in our text, we all know that, in verses 18 to 19, Jesus says now to the disciples, what, 11 of them, now I'm resurrected, now it's not to Israel. You go and what? Make disciples of all nations. A quick testimony, when I started uh, living engineering and going to study, prepare for full time, I was prepared to go anywhere. In fact, I was thinking I'm going to go to Hong Kong, maybe lecture there, help them to prepare for the time, the 1997 takeover by China, where the, the church there. But God sent me back here, started with NECF. I thought, oh, that's enough, very big already. Travel up and down the, the Penang to South Johor, travel to the East Coast. But later, the Lord let me out, started ministry for Asia Pacific. And at this stage of my life, the Lord said, I want you to be prepared to travel. You are going to Europe. You are going maybe even to Africa and some other parts. You just wait, lah, I'll tell you. I'm not telling you too much, but get ready for a broader traveling ministry. Wow! When I started full-time about 32 years ago, I didn't realize it's going to come to that today. But what I'm trying to tell you, our obedience, our service must be dynamic. We must be prepared to what? Change and keep in step with the Spirit. All right, let me quickly move on. Workers of the kingdom can expect God's provisions. Matthew chapter 10, verses 8, the second part, to verse 10. The worker is worth his keep. Hudson Taylor says, God's work done in God's ways will never lack God's resources. Can I provide a testimony? That is true in my life. And I'm sure you talk to missionaries, they will tell you that is true. Somehow, in the right time, God sends timely provisions. Huh? Even in Matt, after June, uh, uh, my accountant told me, uh, we can manage for this year until June only. So before June, I already started praying. And during the lockdown, I managed to go in for one day just to access a computer for a short while. And then the, my, my staff was shocked. Oh, yo, so many gifts on are coming in. We don't know who is this person. Somebody gave us a gift, a stranger. We must find out, call him. What happened? Uh? The gift is 9999. I also don't know what happened. Why, why can't you put it 10,000? But he put it 9999. So I say, maybe it's a tidying, or maybe he got something, he, mathematician, a very accurate divide. 10% is 9999, so I'm going to give the tidying to the Lord. So God, amazingly, I said, the Lord showed up again. We were zero, we were almost running dry, no more money to pay already. And then suddenly, check come in. Suddenly, a US 10,000 come in. Hallelujah! <laughs> so this is the second year of the COVID, eh, and the Lord still provides. God's work, done in God's ways, what? Will never lack God's resources. We need to believe in that. We need to come back to the basics because there will be anxiety. You have your family. So who's going to take care of this? Who's going to take care of that? You have to trust your needs to the Lord. All right? Warnings of conflict in part of the mission instruction to the disciples and persecution. Matthew chapter 10, verses 17 to 19. Conflicts may happen even within Christian family because... What happened? There will be competing loyalties. You know, when the Lord called me full time, I don't come from a rich family, you know. So I told the Lord, so what about my parents? Huh? They're not yet Christians, you know. What about my other siblings huh, who need me? I'm the eldest, you know. I mean, I'm the first graduate from MU, can earn a decent salary, huh, way back in 1980 when I came up. So what happened if I go full time? 
Can I just say that those, those days, as a joke, like, you go full-time, you may be able to make more money by selling vegetables on, on the street <laughs> than, than going full-time. So very sacrificial. But the Lord said, you have to trust me. And the Lord challenged me, you trusted me for your salvation, your eternity. So why can't you trust me for the next few years? I'm the Lord of the harvest. I call you, I will provide. And, and the word given to me in the prompting of spirit, it's a package deal. I'm not just calling you out to provide for you. I will also provide for your family. Now, in the natural, it seems very difficult. How? How? Engineering, man. How? How? The Lord said, forget about asking me how. I'm the one who put the stars into place at night, you know, the universe. You just trust me. I will work it out for you. Hallelujah. My testimony is after all these years, the Lord's promise is true. He is Jehovah Jireh. And I want to emphasize, God's provision is enough and timely. Very, very important. Then persecution. Uh, don't have to talk too much about it, but it is there. You expect persecution if you're going to witness for me. In our modern world today, uh, some churches are getting persecuted for speaking and teaching the Bible against transgender sex values, against LGBT, everything. Uh. Countries are coming with laws, you know. Pastors have been punished already from even preaching what comes up from the Bible. So, But we are called to be faithful witness. We're not called to preach things that are convenient, easy. We are called to bear witness for Bible values and for Christ. Okay? So it is to be expected on account of being a witness for Christ. Today in China, the people ask me, is the church still being persecuted? I say, yeah. I say, those that don't compromise are still being persecuted in China, the house churches. That's our biggest view today. All right? Finally, the instruction for missions is faith in the sovereign goodness of God. All right? The last part of Matthew chapter 10 uh, verses 28 to 32, the, the Lord reminded his disciples, just take a staff, take your sandals, basic necessities, don't worry, your basic needs will be provided for. God is sovereignly good. When your need increase, God also will increase in the provision. By the way, when I say these words, uh, when I propose to my wife, uh, Lydia is from mainland China, I said, you need to know that I'm a full-time servant of God. All this while, as a bachelor, God has provided for all my needs. When you marry me, I will still be in full time. I believe that if it's of the Lord, the Lord will also provide for your needs. Huh? You can, later, you can talk to Lydia. Lah. She will tell you that God has amply provided for us. Hallelujah! So your need increase at bachelor time, one set of need. Lah. <laughs> Got wife, another set of need. Huh? Especially if the wife is not working. Children come. Oi, oh. <laughs> Different set of needs again. So we don't want to think too far. Lah. But if you know that God has called you, just trust Him. And the Lord reminded the disciples, uh, you know, you are worth more than many sparrows. Matthew chapter 10, verse 31. So, you know, today the uncertainties of life, God is still feeding the sparrows. Right? I mean, COVID. We so can we look at nature and allow the Lord to minister to us? Uh? Yes, COVID presents a lot of uncertainty. Fear is a major factor to manage. But God has telling us, you are worth more than many sparrows. So learn to trust Him. Learn to press on and do not lose your zeal in Christian service. Draw us close to Him to depend on Him. That's the reason I believe for the COVID-19, so that we don't depend on ourselves. Huh? Don't be proud. You're doing well in a career and everything. Now what are you talking about? I'll be happy to have a job with the same pay, no increment. So the uncertainties, we leave it to God. But we want to trust God. God take care of the sparrows. I am of more worth than many sparrows. All right, I come to a conclusion now. Okay, we look at Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 to 42. Now, as I talk about this is because everybody is like consumer, huh? going to church to be entertained. Sometimes we choose church today in the city. Is that, what has this church to offer me? What has this world to offer me? Why should I go there? I can join church B and that kind of thing, you know? But here the Lord is reminding us, hey, don't just be a churchgoer. Don't just be a Christian consumer. Be a disciple and count the cost of discipleship. But also count and realize that there are rewards in discipleship. It's not just I have to pay a cost. There is a reward. Okay? So in Matthew chapter 10, verses 37, 42, Jesus in summary is telling us, when you follow Jesus, when you follow me, just like to the 12 and to us today, in sacrificial service. Can I underline the word sacrificial? Because many of us today, we just like to serve God out of convenience. If it's inconvenient for me, uh, no, no, sorry, uh, I, I, I'm not coming. 
Today also I can do that. I'm 66 already. Maybe I should forget about traveling here, traveling there. Those days are over. It's more fun to drive an aircon car. Just go to the East Coast, whether it's, uh, you know, to Kuala Tunggano or where. Because it's Malaysia or it's home, I don't adjust. Uh, relax, makan here, makan there, and then come home. Oh, yo, you ask me to go to China. Ayah, it's a bit difficult. Huh? Worse still, you ask me to go to Myanmar. Ooh, aeroplane here, aeroplane there, a lot of things, you know. But we are to follow all the days of our life, the leading of the Lord in what? Underline the word sacrificial service. You know why? Because when you make the sacrifice, you don't have to talk about it. The God knows. And God is able to what? Reward you and bless your sacrificial obedience many more times than you can even expect. Hallelujah. So there has to be sacrificial service. There has to be obedience. It's not the hearing of the word like what you're hearing me talk to you today. It's the obeying. What the God has put in your heart, just do it. Do it for Him. And the Lord will bless it. Obedience always brings blessings. And the Lord reminds us, both in this life and for eternity, I have rewards for servants, disciples who are kingdom-minded, who serve me in this way, who are prepared for, to go to the second mile and the third mile so that my gospel can be preached to the ends of the earth. I can be worshipped instead of idols. And people can be set free. People can be transformed. Kingdom disciples will always make disciples. All right, I conclude with a challenge. Cease becoming just an ordinary church over. Be a disciple. Be a kingdom disciple. Make this commitment. And the Lord will bless you and your families and your church way, way beyond your expectations. All right, with this challenge, I want you now to rise from the homes where you are and I want to pray for you. Can you all rise? We're going to have a short word of prayer to respond to the message of Kingdom Harvest. Lord, thank you for this message that challenges us today, not just to be converts, not just be ordinary churchgoer, and worse still, to be a Christian consumer. But Lord, in our hearts, we want to hear from you. We want to follow you. We want today to do what you put on our hearts. And Lord, today we say to you, we are your kingdom disciples. We will continue to be involved in sacrificial service and obedience. And we believe your promise that those who seek first your kingdom, you will provide all the basic necessities of life. And the basic necessities do grow when we are single, when we are married, when we are a pensioner. Different stage of life, we have different needs. Huh? And some of us, Lord, we look to you for healing because of health problem. Lord, we pray for the healing anointing to be released right now. We will be touched in a miraculous way that we can share testimony of healing. Some of us today, Lord, we are struggling uh, because of pay card, perhaps loss of job, perhaps uh, not even able to pay mortgages for house or certain things. Uh, we are caught by the COVID. We never expected it to be last so long, but it has really eaten into our savings. Lord, we cry to you for miraculous help and provision. Even as a church, Lord, we look to you, that you will guide us uh, so that we can apply ourselves in wisdom. We know how to steward as a leadership team. Uh, this special uh, period in the history of our nation and the history of the world, so that, Lord, when the, we return, maybe after three years or five years from this COVID thing, uh, we are ready to take on greater things for the glory of God. So help us not just to be people who only focus on our needs. Many of us, you are blessed, Lord. When we see a need, maybe give somebody a $50 when we see the person suffering. Just go and do it in Jesus' name. But Lord, I pray that many care groups will be involved huh, in, in caring for uh, people who are down and out, who are really struggling now and cannot even put foot on the table. Lord, give us a heart of compassion. And I pray that, Lord, hundreds, hundreds of families will be ministered to in a deep way. Maybe in a prolonged way, maybe the last one or two years. But Lord, we're going to see a great harvest of family conversions coming uh, to FGAKL. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege. But God, we ask you, uh, please don't allow us just to be a community church, although it's important. Make us a kingdom DNA church, which is a heart 
of the leadership. And continue to bless us and challenge us as we work through the book of Matthew in the subsequent weeks. And we want to close by saying, Lord, count me in. I am a kingdom disciple and help me to be a good kingdom disciple. Would you pray that prayer before I say the benediction? Lord, help me to be a good kingdom disciple in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the empowering presence of His Holy Spirit go with you so that all the days of your life you will be involved as a kingdom disciple in mission. And there will be kingdom growth, kingdom expressions, kingdom expansion, and kingdom rewards that comes from the King who called you into kingdom service. We bless your name, we praise you, and we continue to pray that we will experience grace upon grace, provision upon provision in the days ahead. We ask all these things in the ever-worthy and precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And God's people say, Amen! Thank you, Pastor Dr. Uwe, for sharing your heart with us this morning. And this morning, if, if God is speaking to you and you want to respond to God, I want to encourage you to, to scan the QR code and, or the link uh, that you can click on the, in the chat. All right, we have pastors and elders are ready to pray with you or even you have a need, all right, you want someone to stand with you, you can also scan the code and click on the link. Our pastors and elders are already ready uh, in the Zoom to pray for you and pray with you. Also, if this morning you want to give your heart and you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to accept Him as your personal Lord and Saviour, same thing, I would like to encourage you to click on the link and scan the QR code because we want to pray with you and we want to journey with you. And, and this morning, we want to um, encourage you if God speaks to you this morning, do respond to God. Do respond to God. So I'll just, I will pray and, and, and end the service for this morning. All right. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for um, speaking to us. Thank you uh, for even ministering to us. Lord, we just continue to pray that, Lord, you will continue to use us as your vessel to reach out to the needy, to reach out to the lost. Lord, use us. Lord, use us for the extension of your kingdom. And Lord, this morning, we just want to pray that Lord continue to keep us, continue to protect us, continue to fill our home with your love, with your peace, and with your joy, Lord God. Father, even this morning, we just want to thank you once again. Thank you once again for all that you have done, and all that you have spoken to us. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us for our service this morning. So I'll see you next week. So take care and stay safe. God bless.